As discussed in the linked reference, the main character in the 1997 film Good Will Hunting is based on a true life story of American child prodigy William Sidus, who at age 8 scored 100% on the MIT entrance exam. Nearly every part in this film comes from descriptions of the life and times of William Sidus, as found in the well-researched 1986 biography The Prodigy by political philosopher Daniel Mahoney and writer Amy Wallace. To show just how beautifully the biographic details from this book play out on the big screen, we're going to quickly look at the origin of the famous Club of Baby Seal scene and then watch the clip. It was found on page 135 of The Prodigy in 1918, just after Sidus had turned 20 and finished both Harvard Mathematics and Harvard Law School. Drafting for World War I had begun, and Sidus was beginning to get into trouble with the police. To remedy this, MIT professor Daniel Comstock, who had been acquainted with Sidus since he had entered Harvard at age 11, gave Sidus his first job at his laboratory at MIT, working on some advanced theoretical problems. In commenting on his hire, he said, I'm hiring Will for two reasons. I need a brilliant mind, and I hope to keep the boy out of jail for his refusal to go to war. At the MIT lab, Comstock assigned Will the task of coding and programming, but failed to tell him that the application was for submarine detection and warfare. When Will found out that his work was going to be put to use for a military application, he was said to be extremely indignant and resigned immediately. Here's how this story famously played out in the film. So why do you think I should work for the National Security Agency? Well, you'd be working on the cutting edge. You'd be exposed to the kind of technology that you wouldn't see anywhere else because we've classified it. Super string theory, chaos math, advanced algorithms. Code breaking. Well, that's one aspect of what we do. Oh, come on. I mean, that is what you do. You guys handle 80% of the intelligence workload. You're seven times the size of the CIA. We don't like to brag about that, Will. But you're exactly right. So the way I see it, the question isn't, why should you work for the NSA? The question is, why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't I work for the NSA? It's a tough one. <laughs> but I'll take a shot. Say I'm working at the NSA and somebody puts a code on my desk, something no one else can break. Maybe I take a shot at it, maybe I break it. And I'm real happy with myself because I did my job well. But maybe that code was the location of some rebel army in North Africa or the Middle East. And once they had that location, they bombed the village where the rebels are hiding. 1,500 people that I never met, never had no problem with, get killed. Now the politicians are saying, oh, send in the Marines to secure the area because they don't give a shit. It won't be their kid over there getting shot, just like it wasn't them when their number got called because they were all pulling a tour in the National Guard. It'll be some kid from Southie over there taking shrapnel in the ass. He comes back to find that the plan he used to work at got exported to the country he just got back from, and the guy who put the shrapnel in his ass got his old job because he'll work for 15 cents a day and no bathroom breaks. Meanwhile, he realizes the only reason he was over there in the first place was so that we could install a government that would sell us oil at a good price. And, of course, the oil companies use a little skirmish over there to scare up domestic oil prices. A cute little ancillary benefit for them, but it ain't helping my buddy at two fifty a gallon. They're taking their sweet time bringing the oil back, of course. Maybe they even took the liberty of hiring an alcoholic skipper who likes to drink martinis and fucking play slalom with the icebergs. It ain't too long till he hits one, spills the oil, and kills all the sea life in the North Atlantic. So now my buddy's out of work, he can't afford to drive, so he's walking to the fucking job interviews, which sucks because the shrapnel in his ass has given him chronic hemorrhoids. And meanwhile, he's starving because every time he tries to get a bite to eat, the only blue plate special they're serving is North Atlantic Scrod with Quaker State. So what did I think? I'm holding out for something better. I figure, fuck it, while I'm at it, why not just shoot my buddy? Take his job, give it to his sworn enemy, hike up gas prices, bomb a village, club a baby seal, hit the hash pipe, and join the National Guard. I could be elected president. 